chapter number four in your Bibles, Ephesians chapter four. We're going to carry on with our series tonight on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And specifically tonight, we're going to talk about this subject, what it means to grieve the Holy Spirit. Um, and so we are talk about an important topic we're going to talk about tonight, what it means to grieve the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4 in your Bibles, when you find your places, if you're able to stand, um, let's stand tonight out of respect for the reading of God's Word and give you another chance to stretch your legs as well. Ephesians 4 and verse 24. How many glad you have a Bible tonight? Amen? Boy, I'm going to tell you, this book's amazing, isn't it? You know, when we walked out this morning, if nothing else, we had to walk out saying, wow, what, what a book. And anyway, I'm, not, I, I, I'm tempted to say so many other things, but I'm not. That's another message. All right, Ephesians 4 verse 24. The Bible says, And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, Wherefore, put away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Verse 30 says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. And let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. And so uh, since we've started this series, we've been trying to keep it fairly brief, and we're going we're gonna to do that tonight. I don't think this is going to be a lengthy message this evening, but I want you to notice verse number 30. That's our text tonight. The Bible says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed unto the day of redemption. What does it mean? What, what does it mean to grieve the Holy Spirit? Is that serious? Is that something serious? Is that something that we ought to be concerned about? Is that going on in America? Today, um, does it hinder the church? All those things. Does it hinder your Christian life? Does it hinder your marriage, your family? Well, the truth of the matter is, the answer to all those are yes, it does. It, 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 it affects everything. It affects everything in your Christian life. And we're gonna get into that tonight. So you may be seated. And let's talk about the grieving of the Holy Spirit this evening. And so let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for a wonderful day how can it already be preaching time? Lord, we're getting ready in just a little bit. This will be it. And Lord, this Sunday, December the 4th, 2022, will be in the books. And so Lord, I pray in the last remaining moments of this service, God, I pray that we'll get everything we can get out of it. God, give our people the uh, energy to, to listen and to listen intently. And Father, uh, this is a simple message tonight, but I, I pray that you would use the uh, simplicity of this sermon or this lesson or what, whatever it seems to be. I pray that you'd use it, Lord, to teach us a great truth, and I pray that we would be the Christians that you want us to be. Help us, Lord, please, tonight. Holy Spirit, breathe upon us. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, and for his sake, amen. Charles Spurgeon said this, if we do not have the Spirit of God it were better to shut the churches, to nail up the doors, to put a black cross on them and say, God, have mercy on us. If you ministers have not the Spirit of God, you'd better not preach, and you people had better stay at home. I think I speak not too strongly when I say that a church in the land without the Spirit of God is rather a curse than a blessing. If you have not the Spirit of God, Christian worker, Remember that you stand in somebody else's way. You are as a tree bearing no fruit, standing where a fruitful tree might grow. And so I want to talk to you a little bit tonight about the Holy Spirit. And specifically, we want to discuss this subject of grieving the Holy Spirit, grieving the Holy Spirit. So honestly, if you don't get the, the, this first part's just introduction, but if you don't get the last part, be sure you get the introduction because I really believe that it might be 
one of the most important parts of the message uh, this evening. If we're going to understand what it means to grieve the Spirit of God, I believe it's important that we understand where the Holy Spirit is. So where is the Holy Spirit? Where is he? You know, think about it. Is he floating around in this room right now? Is he, uh, is he in the world somewhere right now? Where, where is the Holy Spirit? So I want to take just a few moments, and I believe this will help us to, to understand a little bit more about this idea of grieving the Spirit of God, but to where is the Holy Spirit? So let me make several statements here tonight. Number one, the Holy Spirit takes up residence in our human body at the moment of conversion. At the moment of conversion. Now, I want to show that to you. And so take your Bibles tonight and turn to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. Let me give you a great scripture tonight. Ephesians chapter 1 in your Bibles. And look at verse number 13. Notice what our Bible tells us here. Ephesians 1 verse 13. The Bible says, In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance under the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory. Notice that, uh, in whom also after that ye believed. In other words, you and I did not have the Holy Spirit in us before we believed. It was after we believed. And so if somebody says to you, I'm not a Christian, but I have the Holy Spirit, that's contrary to the word of God. Uh, the, the, the way, the time that you and I receive the Holy Spirit is at the moment of conversion. Whenever you got saved, wherever it was, uh, maybe it was a revival, maybe it was a camp meeting, maybe it was a Sunday morning service, maybe it was uh, somebody came by your house and shared the gospel with you, but, but you remember uh, the Father drawing you. you. You remember being under conviction and knowing your need for a Savior and you received Christ as your Savior. Our Bible says that at that very instant, at that very moment, the Holy Spirit took up residence in your body. Now, there are some who believe, well, when we get saved, we don't get all of the Holy Spirit. But uh, I, I, I believe it's more like this. I believe when we get saved, I believe we get all of the Holy Spirit, but the question is, does he have all of you? That's the question. And so, again, just simple, this is so simple tonight, but the Holy Spirit takes up residence in our human body at the moment of conversion. The second statement that I wanna make is this. Once the Spirit of God comes in, our bodies become his permanent temple. Once the Spirit of God comes in, our bodies become his permanent temple. Again, I want to show that to you tonight. So 1 Corinthians chapter 3 in your Bibles. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and look at verse number 16 tonight. You are, my dear friend, if you're here tonight and you're born again, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Now you say, preacher, I've heard that, didn't know what it meant. Uh, and so when you get born again, at that very moment, the Spirit of God comes to live inside of you, and your body, your physical body, becomes the temple of the Holy Spirit, the permanent temple of the Spirit of God. Look at 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 16. The Bible says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Verse 17. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Now, turn over just a few more pages to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and look at verse number 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 19 and notice what our, what our Bible tells us here. What know ye not, verse 19, what know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God and ye are not your own. That's 1 Corinthians 6 and verse number 19. So the Holy Spirit takes up residence in our human body at the moment of conversion. Once the Spirit of God comes in, our bodies become his permanent temple. That leads me to statement number three, and that's this. That's why it is absolutely imperative that you and I yield ourselves completely to the control of the Holy Spirit. So when you get saved at that very moment, God puts his Holy Spirit in you. And you and I become the temple of the Holy Spirit. 
My dear friend, listen, from that very moment until this one, we need to uh, completely yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit and let the Spirit of God have total control in our life. Now you say, preacher, why is that, why, why is that so important? Let me show you. Turn back over to Romans chapter six in your Bibles this evening, Romans chapter six, and look at verse number 16. Oh my goodness, this is so important tonight. And so we know that at the moment of conversion, the Spirit of God comes in. Our bodies become the temple of the Holy Spirit. And from that moment on, you and I have a, uh, a mandate. We must yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Why are so many people that claim to be Christians struggling? They're struggling in their Christian life. They're not living that victorious Christian life. We're gonna, listen, we're touching on it right here because even though the Spirit of God is living inside of you, it's very important that you yield yourself to the Holy Spirit and that you and I walk in the Holy Ghost. Now look at your Bibles, Romans chapter six, verse 16. The Bible says, know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey. Look at this, his servants Ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Look at verse 19, Romans 6, verse 19. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now, Paul says, that you've been born again, even so now, yield your, your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. You say, preacher, I cannot get victory over my temper. You know what needs to happen? Tonight, there needs to be a yielding to the Holy Spirit. You say, preacher, I can't get victory over this habit. I can't get victory over this vice. I can't get victory over this thing, the pornography or lust or, uh, or, or, or gambling or whatever it may be. And you say, preacher, I just can't get victory. Listen to me now, church. If you're here tonight and you're truly born again, that means that at that very moment, the Holy Spirit of God came to live inside of you and your body became the temple of the Holy Spirit. And from that moment on, it is absolutely imperative that you yield yourself to the Holy Ghost. Why? So the Spirit of God can take resonance in your, your life and begin to control you and to guide you and to lead you. Some of you have heard this story. Man had a beautiful home. I mean, just... Absolutely a beautiful, two-story, beautiful, like a mansion. And one night, there was a knock on the door. The guy wasn't expecting any visitors, but he went to the door and opened the door, and, and the Lord Jesus was at the door. And he said, oh, my, Jesus. He said, so, so good to see you. And, uh, and the Lord said, you know, he said, I was just wondering, I need a, I, I could use a place to stay. And he said, yes, absolutely. He said, man, I've got all this room. I own this beautiful house. And he said, I've got a room upstairs in the corner on the top floor up there. And he said, it's just absolutely gorgeous. He said, it's got a beautiful, beautiful restroom in it and a, a, a place to sleep. And I mean, it's like a, 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 almost like an apartment up there. And he said, absolutely. He said, I'll tell you what you do. He said, you just take up residence in that room up there. And he said, it's your and you stay there as long as you want and, and you're welcome to it. And Jesus said, well, thank you. And, uh, but there's something we have to understand that Jesus will only take what you give him. And so sure enough, the Lord went up and he, he stayed in that room up there and it was nice. It was a nice room. He stayed in that room. Well, later that night, there was another knock at the door. And the man thought, I'm not expecting any, any visitors. Went to the door and he just cracked, it was late, late, late. And he cracked the door open and it was Satan. And Satan just burst through the door. And boy, you talk about a fight, man. I mean, a fight broke out. And you've never heard such screaming and fighting and clawing. And, and, uh, and uh, boy, this, the, the, Satan was all over this man. And they were just fighting and he was screaming, yelling for help. And, and finally, finally, he was able to successfully push Satan out the door. Man, he locked the door behind him and, and uh, well that next morning he said to the Lord he said Lord did you not hear me hollering last night did you not hear all the commotion going on and he said Satan came in last night and he said I was yelling for help and he he said you you didn't help me and and the Lord said well he said you know he said there's a problem he said he said you gave me that one room up there in the corner of the house but he said that's all you gave me And the man said, Lord, you're right. You're right. 
He said, I'll tell you what. He said, from now on, the whole top floor is yours. He said, the whole top floor, it's yours. He said, you just, it, it's yours, it's yours. And so uh, Jesus will only take what you give him. Well, later that night, again, there was a knock at the door. And the man went to the door and he cracked the door. And sure enough, it was Satan again. And Satan, boy, I tell you what, you give Satan an inch, he'll take a mile every time. And man, he just busted in the door. And boy, the fight broke out again. And I mean, you've never heard such fighting and temptation and resistance. And that man was crying out for help, help, help. He said, help. And, and boy, I mean, just it went on for a long time. And finally, he was finally able to push Satan out the door. And man, he bolted it and locked it and chained it. It. And the next day he said to the Lord, he said, Lord, he said, did you not hear me last night hollering and yelling? Did you not hear the commotion and the fight that was going on? And the Lord said, yes, he said, I did. I, I did hear that. He said, but there's a problem. He said, you gave me the top floor, but you're still on the bottom. That man said, you know what, Lord, you're right. You're right. He said, you know what, Lord, from now on, you can just have the whole house. He said, you can have the back room. He said, you can have the top floor and have the bottom floor. He said, man, you just go anywhere you want to go and stay anywhere you want to stay. And he said, it's yours to have him. And, uh, and the Lord said, okay, that sounds good. Well, later that night, that man went to bed. And I mean, he slept like a baby. But that night as well, there was a knock on the door. And they weren't expecting visitors. And that night, the door swung open. And Jesus stood widely in the door. And he said, can I help you? And Satan said, I think I got the wrong house. Yeah. Now, that's what I'm talking about. It, listen, you, you know why Christians, oh yeah, boy, wow. You know why Christians are struggling? People that claim to be saved, people that claim to be born again, people that claim to be filled with the Holy Ghost, and yet they're struggling with temptation and struggling with battles and struggling with this and struggling with that. You know why? Because we have been saved and we have allowed the Holy Spirit to come in, but we've given him this little room at the top floor and we said, Lord, we're glad to have you and I'm glad I'm saved and, and I'm glad I have the Holy Spirit, but I tell you what, you just stay right up there and uh, if I need you, I'll call you and I'm gonna tell you something and Jesus will only take what you give him. And that's why we're struggling with lust and sin and problems because we're not filled with the Holy Ghost and we're not walking in the Spirit. And oh, I came here tonight to tell this church it is absolutely imperative that we yield ourselves to the Holy Spirit of God. Hey, man, boy, if we didn't come get anything else, we, uh, that was good right there, amen. Let's talk about the Holy Spirit, though. Let's talk about grieving the Holy Spirit tonight. Three thoughts and we're gonna go. Number one, it's possible to grieve the Holy Spirit because he's a person. So that's important for us to understand. You say, preacher, grieve, grieve the Holy Ghost. We're gonna get into that in just a moment. But I want you to understand, it's possible to grieve the Holy Spirit because he is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person, a real person of the Godhead. Now, Pastor, why are you teaching that? Because I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit's not a thing. The Holy Spirit is not a thought. Hey, hey Calvary, the Holy Spirit's not your conscience. You say, yeah, we have the Holy Spirit, he's, he's my conscience. No, he has a bearing on your conscience. The Holy Spirit's not your conscience. The Holy Spirit's a person. The Holy Spirit is a very real person. Did you know that the scripture uses very personal pronouns when referring to the Holy Spirit? In fact, let's look at, this is it's Bible study time. We're okay, aren't we? Let's look at it tonight. Look at John, John 14, the gospel of John, John 14, verse 17. And notice how our Bible talks about the Holy Spirit, not as a thing, not as a thought, but as a person, John 14 and verse 17, the Bible says, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth, what's the next word? Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him for he uh, dwelleth with you and shall be in you. And I'm chuckling because it's almost a, almost a little humorous that the Bible just uses that over and over and over again, I think because he's trying to teach us a lesson here. Now turn, turn in your Bibles over a couple pages. Look at John 16 and look at verse number 13. The Holy Spirit is a person. He's a person. Uh, John 16 
And verse number 13, the Bible says, and when he, the, uh, the, the, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. Is that important? I believe that's very important. Uh, the Bible is pointing something very important out and that's this, the Holy Spirit's a person. He's a person. The Spirit of God is a person with feelings. Romans 8, 27. The Spirit of God is a person who speaks. Acts 13, 2. The Spirit of God is a person who serves. Acts 16, verses 6 and 7. Uh, again, it's important for us to understand. It's important for our young people to understand. It's important for our teenagers to understand something. The Holy Ghost is not just something that's just hovering out there. No, no. He's in you. Amen. He, a person, is in you. He's not something like a cloud that just floats around uh, like you might say. No, 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 no. He dwells in you. If you've been born again, you are his temple. It's important you yield yourself to him and understand that the spirit of God is a person. He is not an inanimate object like furniture or drywall. He is a person who can be offended. He can be grieved. So number one, it's possible to grieve the Holy Spirit because he's a person quickly. Number two, it's possible to grieve the Holy Spirit with our performance. What do you mean, preacher? By our actions, by, our, by the lifestyle that we live. Now, I believe, that's, I believe we see that right here in Ephesians. In fact, turn back to over there, if you will, Ephesians chapter four, where we started tonight. Ephesians chapter four and it's interesting, and we, we don't have time to give you all of these tonight, but it's interesting that Ephesians chapter four, before and after the verse that says, grieve not the Holy Spirit, we find a list of things that, that the Bible gives us, and I believe that this, that these things are things that grieve the Holy Spirit. And so look at your Bibles, Ephesians chapter four and verse 31, and it gives us a little list here. Uh, verse 31, the Bible says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. So the Bible is telling us that we can grieve the Spirit of God with our performance, with our actions, with things, the things that we do. What, what do you mean, preacher? Things like bitterness. Bitterness. Uh, Ephesians 4.31, let all bitterness it's the Greek word pikria, and it, and it means acridity. Anybody recognize that word? I didn't. Acridity. How about this word, acrid? Let me tell you what acridity is. Acridity is something that gives off an offensive smell or taste. So when the Lord says, I don't want you to be bitter, you know what he's saying? It's the idea of being sour toward somebody. So I, I just I ask this question tonight. Is there anybody you're sour toward? Is there anybody that you have an acrid taste for? I mean, somebody walks into this church and as soon as they walk in, you go the other way. And it's forming, it's turning into bitterness. The Bible seems to be teaching us this, that bitterness grieves the spirit of God. It's the idea, the word bitterness there and picria is the idea of a bitter root. Well, that makes sense because the Bible says in Hebrews 12, 15, looking diligently, lest any man fell of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. Church, can I just say this quickly and we're gonna go to the next point, but I wanna tell you something, it ain't worth it. I know that's not correct English, but it's not worth it. It's not worth you being mad the rest of your life and staying indifferent, having hard feelings and being bit. You say, preacher, you don't know what they did. I, I, I get it. I, I understand some of you have been mistreated and cheated and you've been lied about and you've been slandered and some of you have been abused and I'm not making little uh, uh, of, of any of those things and I'm sorry and I wish if I could, I could go back and change it. I wish I could, but I can't. By the way, neither can you. And did you know it's not gonna help you to stay bitter for the rest of your life? Bitter against that person that hurt you, bitter against that person that spoke against you, and that bitterness has a way of grieving the Holy Ghost. Look what he says. 
Let all bitterness and wrath, that word wrath is the idea of passionate anger, being angry enough to hurt someone. Well, pastor, I would never be angry enough to hurt somebody, okay? Being angry enough to make a, make a vulgar gesture. Grieves the Holy Spirit. The Bible mentions anger. It's a word that means vengeance or getting back at another person. It mentions clamor, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor. What is clamor, preacher? What is clamor? Well, the word clamor there means outcry or it means shouting vehemently. Shouting vehemently. I've heard of business meetings in churches where in the business meetings, somebody on this side of the church is shouting vehemently at somebody on this side of the church. And we wonder why the Holy Ghost doesn't stir. You know why the Spirit of God doesn't work? We have so grieved him in our churches. No wonder he doesn't, doesn't work. Uh, the Bible talks about evil speaking. Did y'all see that? It's a word that means vilification. Uh, how many Christians are guilty of this when they speak against others or vilify another church member? The word you, the, 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 the Bible talks about malice. It means wickedness that is not afraid to break laws. Now, again, the Bible's teaching us something here that none of those things you and I are to be involved in. Now, if you go before Ephesians 4.30, it talks about lying. It talks about stealing. And the Bible is saying something here. The Bible is saying, hey, child of God, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God is using you as his temple. And whatever you do, don't be involved in these kind of things because they grieve the Spirit of God. And so, number one, it's possible to grieve the Holy Spirit because he's a person. Number two, it's possible to grieve the Holy Spirit with our performance we're done. And number three, the possibility of grieving the Holy Spirit is potentially dangerous. It's dangerous. You say, preacher, okay. All right, okay, I get it. Holy Spirit lives inside of us. I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit. Okay, all right. No big deal. Yeah. It's quite the big deal. If you grieve the Holy Ghost, it's actually a very big deal. Now, again, Ephesians 4.30, the Bible says, and in fact, if, if you've turned away from there, go back there again, Ephesians 4, verse 30, the Bible says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you're sealed unto the day of redemption. The word grieve in Ephesians 4.30 means to throw into sorrow. It means to offend or to be in heaviness. I, Pastor, I don't understand that. Yeah, you do. Have you ever grieved somebody that you love? Have you husbands ever grieved your wife? Don't say amen right there, okay? You know why? Because we have. Every one of us have. Have you ladies ever grieved your husband, you say, not me. Come on now, come on. I know better. I was born in the night, but wasn't born last night. Amen, I know better. And you know what? If you grieve somebody that you really love, I mean, you grieve them, you know what happens? It offends them. It, 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 sort of, it sort of closes their spirit. They might even do this. They might retreat to another part of the house. Or they might even go outside the house. And because they've been grieved, because they've been grieved, the communication is greatly hindered. You might not talk for a day or maybe even two. And that communication is cut off. Why? Because one or the other got grieved. And so it is with the Holy Spirit. Because he is a person and because he lives ever so close to us, we can grieve the Spirit of God. It's the same thought, but much more dangerous you say, well, preacher, why is it so dangerous to grieve the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit, the Bible tells us that one of the purposes of the Holy Spirit is to convict. Now, what do you mean, preacher? The Holy Spirit is your warning system. If you're born again, when you're getting too close to sin, when you're associating with the wrong kind of people, when you're looking at the wrong kind of things, it is the Holy Spirit 
that turns on the alarm, okay? Some of you might even have this kind of a car, car alarm. If somebody even gets close to your car, the alarm goes off. I, I've been <laughs> a few of those, and man, you don't even have to touch it. You just get close to it, man. That thing, burr, 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 burr. And the alarm starts going off just because you got close. That's the Holy Spirit. That's why the Holy Spirit is so important because when you and I get born again and he takes up residence in our body, all of a sudden when we get off track and we start going, oh yes, 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 good neighbor, please don't turn me off tonight, and you and I start going the wrong direction, all of a sudden, burr, 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 burr. That's the Holy Spirit that said, whoa, 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 what are you doing? Don't you dare look at that. Don't you dare go there. Don't you dare say that. You know better than that. That's the Holy Ghost. But here's the problem. If we grieve the Holy Spirit, you know what happens? Sometimes he retreats to another part of the house. And he may not sound the warning like he would have otherwise. John 16, 8, and when he, the Holy Spirit, and when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. What's that saying, preacher, that the Holy Spirit is our warning system? He's our warning system. And if we grieve the Spirit of God, it can, it can mess up that warning system, okay? It's why when you're painting your house and you have a smoke alarm, fire alarm that's affixed to your wall or your ceiling. Maybe it's a kind that you can't get off. It's why they tell you as you're painting, don't paint your fire alarm. You know why? Because when you paint it, it, it covers it up. And, it's, and, and that, that smoke alarm is not able to, to sense the smoke. And because of that, it doesn't sound the alarm. Anybody follow me tonight? It doesn't sound an alarm. We have some firemen here tonight in our church. It's why firemen are so insistent upon keeping the batteries changed in your smoke alarm. <laughs> have you changed the batteries? Have you changed the batteries? Why? Because if your batteries are dead and your house catches on fire, your smoke alarm's not gonna sound. And if you're here tonight and you have grieved the Spirit of God and grieved the Spirit of God and grieved the Spirit of God and you've sort of pushed him up into that other room, brother, I'm telling you, when the smoke of sin begins to stir, sometimes the Holy Ghost won't send out the warning. And so because of that, it's important that we don't grieve the Spirit of God. I've had some people who told me this, preacher, my sin, my sin doesn't bother me. Well, I'm gonna be honest, that scares me to death. You know what that tells me? They've painted over the fire alarm. They've so grieved the Spirit of God that the Spirit of God has taken up a place somewhere else in a back room away from them. They tell us that at least 119 people died in Hurricane Ian. 119 people, just the other day. And most of those deaths came from drowning in the storm surge as high as 18 feet in some areas and now things are coming out and the criticisms are this, that the warning to evacuate went out way too late. And because the warning came out too late, a lot of people stayed and many of those people lost their lives. That's what I'm talking about, church. If we grieve the Holy Ghost, when he needs to sound the warning, he doesn't sound it. He is that one that convicts. I'll tell you something else. He is that one that guides. John 16, 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. How many believe we need the guidance of the Holy Spirit? Amen? Yes, we do. We need the guidance of the Holy Spirit in this church. You need the guidance of the Holy Spirit in your marriage. Amen? You need the guidance of the Holy Spirit in rearing your kids, especially nowadays when everything in the world's against them. And if you grieve the Spirit of God, and if I grieve the Holy Ghost, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit is offended and he, he sort of goes to a reserved place and uh, he was speaking and he was convicting and he was guiding and all of a sudden he just sort of takes a back seat and now he's not guiding you. Sometime back, I was heading to a funeral way up here in the mountains and I was 
preaching. I was preaching the funeral, and I didn't know. I, I, I didn't know how to get to the church. And, uh, and so when I left my house in Statesville, I just punched, I punched the address in my GPS on my phone, and uh, I left State's phone, got up toward Wilkesboro, and everything's going, I mean, everything's going great. And then I got off in this road and turned on this road. And before I knew it, my, my phone, my phone said, you have lost signal. And I didn't have but just a few minutes to get there. And I thought, oh, Lord, don't, don't l- l- lose me now. You know, it's a terrible thing. A lot of Christians have lost signal. I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm just saying you've lost signal. You know why? Because we have grieved the Holy Spirit. Ruth Paxson was a missionary in the country of China. And she wrote a book called Life on the Highest Plane. And she tells the story about one day she was at a university and was there to uh, do some teaching or hold some meetings. And while she was at this college, she was... uh, entertained in a home where the guest room was over the kitchen and approached by an outside stairway. Later, when an occasion arose which made it desirable for her to enter another section of the house, she found every other door fastly locked. Seized with a strange sense of loneliness, she returned to the one room which was hers to occupy and poured her her heart out in prayer. In other words, she was trying to see other parts of the house, but all the other parts of the house were locked solid. And I'm afraid we've done that with the Holy Spirit. We've allowed the Lord in, but we've just sort of told the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you have control in this area, you have control in this area, but this area, stay out of that. That, you're You're not welcome in that area. And you know, church, when we do that, it grieves the Spirit of God. You know what would be great tonight as we get ready to turn the new year? It'd be great if we just had a bunch of folks at Calvary Baptist Church who yielded to the Spirit of God like never before. And this year, we just said, Holy Ghost, you got us. God, my marriage. God, my family. God, my home. God, my ministry. Just God, the church. Holy Spirit, you have your way. And you have not just a room up here on the second floor. You've got the second floor. You've got the bottom floor. You've got the basement. You've got it all. And you just have access in my life. Let's bow our heads tonight. Father, thank you for what you've shown us tonight from your word. Thank you for teaching us about the Holy Spirit. And Lord, although maybe... The preaching wasn't all that. God, I pray that you use the truth of what was preached tonight. And Lord, help us to be so careful about this thing of offending the Spirit of God. Lord, can I go ahead and just pray this? Father, forgive us for when we've grieved your precious Spirit. How many times have I offended him? How many times have I sort of given him that room on the second floor? It's a nice room. But I just let him have access to that, and that was it. Lord, tonight, would you give us moms and dads, husbands and wives, young adults and teenagers, who tonight would say, Holy Spirit, you've got it all. You've got access to every part of my life. Show me what you'd have me to do. Show me what you'd not have me to do. Convict me. Teach me. Lord, I pray tonight that you'd have your way in this invitation. Speak to hearts, please. And we sure thank you in Christ's name. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. A couple questions. How many here tonight would say, Preacher, if I died tonight, I know beyond a shadow of any doubt, I know that I'm on my way to heaven. If that's you, you say, Preacher, I know I've been born again. You just slip your hand up tonight. Say, Preacher, I know I'm saved. Praise the Lord. Wonderful, wonderful. You can lower your hands. That's wonderful. Who's here tonight would raise your hand and say, Preacher, if I died tonight, I'm not sure about heaven. I'm not sure I'm saved. I don't really know that I've been born again. And I want you to pray for me. Is there one like that anywhere here tonight? I can pray. Can I pray for you? Pastor, if I died, I'm not sure I'd go to heaven. Would you pray with me tonight? Is there one anywhere? 
Can I pray with you? Okay. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. And I'm going to ask that nobody's looking right now. How many are here tonight and you'd have to be honest and you'd say, Preacher, I'm afraid. Maybe I've grieved him. I'm afraid maybe I sort of put him up in that little room and, and I've sort of grieved the Spirit of God. And God knows what it's about. But preacher, would you help me pray? Would you help me pray about that? I want to do right. I want to do right. God knows my heart. If that's you, every head bowed, every eye closed, right now, you just slip your hand up very quietly. You'd say, Pastor, remember me. Remember me. Remember me. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. Hands. Hands all over the house tonight. There might even be somebody here tonight that says, Preacher, I didn't, I didn't even know. I didn't know I was capable of grieving the Spirit of God like that. I didn't know. Okay. But if that's you tonight, or if the Holy Spirit has dealt with your heart about any other thing tonight, any other thing at all, maybe tonight the Holy Spirit has pinpointed something in your life. He's been warning you about something. Maybe it's the wrong crowd. Maybe it's the wrong websites. Maybe it's the wrong kind of music the wrong kind of friends. And the Holy Spirit has been, he's been warning you about these things and maybe you've not been as yielded as you ought to be, okay? Tonight I'm gonna ask you to do something. I'm gonna ask you to come to this old fashioned altar and I'm gonna ask you tonight to yield yourself afresh and anew to the Holy Ghost and let him start something fresh in your life tonight. Would you all stand with us tonight uh, 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 around the house? Father, Have your way in this invitation. Oh, Holy Spirit, forgive us for when we've grieved you. Forgive us for when we've disappointed you and disobeyed you. God, forgive us. And I pray tonight, Lord, that we're yielding ourselves to the the Spirit of God, to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Spirit of God, put us on a new path. God, transform us tonight. Lord, that one that's struggling with something in their life. They've been struggling, Lord. It's like a monkey on their back. Lord, I pray tonight the Holy Ghost would would break the chain. I pray that he would break the bondage. Lord, miraculously, Lord, I, I pray he'd do it. And I know you can. Father, have your way in this invitation. Speak to hearts, please. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Would you just step out and come tonight? Would you come? Folks are coming. Folks are coming. How about you tonight? Would you come? Hey, young person, 16, 17, 18, 19 years old, are you yielded to the Holy Spirit? You say, preach, that's something for mom and dad. Oh, no, 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 that's something for you. If you're a teenager here tonight and you claim to be born again, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He lives inside of you right now. He is a person that you can grieve. Hey, hey, teenager, Young adult, would tonight you yield yourself to the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit, whatever you want from me in 2023, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll teach a Sunday school class. I'll sing in the choir. I'll help as an usher. Lord, I'm going to start being more faithful. Lord, whatever you want, I'll do it. Lord, you want me to be more respectful to my parents? I'll do that. You want me to apologize to my parents? I'll do that. I'll do that. Yield it. Yield it. If you're watching our live stream tonight, we're uh, delighted to have you watching. There's a number on the bottom of your screen. 704-327-5662. And if you're watching this broadcast, we are so glad to have you watching. And if you need prayer tonight, would you call that number on the bottom of your screen? We have some folks They're waiting by the phone right now and they'll gladly take your call tonight and we would love to pray with you, especially if you need Jesus Christ, please call that number tonight, okay? I hope you'll do that. Father, thank you for what you've done today. Wow, what a day. It's been such a good day. 
Thank you for the precious Word of God. Thank you for your sweet, sweet presence today. And Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for giving us of the precious Holy Spirit. My soul, we're so blessed. Lord, we don't just have the Holy Spirit come upon us. He indwells us. Thank you for that. God, work in hearts tonight. I don't know any of the decisions. I don't know why people came. doesn't matter to me. You, you, know, you know all about that. But I pray whatever decision they're making tonight, Lord, I pray that you'd confirm it, seal it. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that forevermore you'd change them and use them for the cause of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for that. You can look up here, church. You just stay in the altar as long as you need to tonight. We're going to sing this little chorus. We, we've sang it. I know we've sang it over and we've sang it every night, I guess. We've done this series. But we're going to sing it again tonight. And it definitely fits tonight. That's for sure. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. And as you sing it tonight, you mean this prayer to the Lord. All right? Sing it together, church. Spirit of Before I kiss Miss Tammy, I have a little place I go. And I say, Holy Spirit, I yield myself to thee. Guide me, fill me, control me. Teach me your word today. Guide me in prayer today. And then throughout the day, throughout the day, I'll yield myself to the Holy Spirit. I hope you do that. I hope you'll be yielding yourself to the Spirit of God. Because when you, when you, uh, when you, when you get one on one with the Lord, you know what happens. You know when you've grieved Him. Every once in a while, every once in a while, something will happen, and uh, I know y'all think I'm a saint, but I'm not. I'm a depraved. Now I'm a saved sinner, praise the Lord. But I, but sometimes I do things, and you know what? I've, I've, I've had this happen in the past where I did something almost instantaneously. I know. I just grieved the Spirit. I just grieved Him. Man, I don't know about y'all. I don't want to grieve the Holy Ghost. I, I want Him to have full access to the house. Amen? Amen. 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 We love y'all. Thank y'all for being in the Lord's house today. We're going to be dismissed in a word of prayer. And uh, hope you'll be safe going home and have a great week this week. And we'll look forward to seeing you back uh, this coming Wednesday night. And uh, ladies, don't forget you have mail. All right? So be sure you go by and get your mail tonight after the service. All hearts free this evening. All right. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Brother Chris, come up here and dismiss us in prayer tonight, if you will. Appreciate you, buddy. We're glad you've been here today. It's been a good day, hasn't it? Amen. Amen. Love on somebody, fellowship before you leave tonight, and uh, we'll see you back this coming Wednesday. Pray for us. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. Lord, thank you for a wonderful service we had today, Lord, this morning, this afternoon. 
Lord, I know, uh, Lord, there are some, some things I've done in my life, Lord, that I know I grieved you. Lord, I do ask you for forgiveness on that. Lord, just help me be the better person that I need to be. Lord, I thank you for Calvary. I thank you for this church. I thank you for the pastor that stands here and teaches us. And Lord, most of all, I thank you for sending Jesus to die on a cross for an old sinner like me. Lord, I want to tell you we love you. We thank you. Lord, we just pray for safety as we all go back home. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We consider it an honor to serve you. And our prayer is that the service was a blessing and an encouragement to your life. If you were impacted today by the preaching of God's word, we encourage you to respond. If we can pray with you, or if you would like to make a decision today for Christ, please call us here at 704-327-5662. We have people waiting right now on the lines prepared to help you. Again, Thank you for joining us today, and we hope to welcome you again soon. Have a wonderful week. No.